If in this year, in 2024, you're trying to learn Power BI, then let me share with you a few thoughts or my ideas of learning Power BI in a very structured way so that you don't get lost. There are so many things in Power BI to learn that often people write to me and they ask questions, hey, what should I learn first? Should I learn DAX first, Power Query first, visualizations first? What exactly should I start my journey with? And what should be the approach of learning Power BI to become a more confident user and get more opportunities? Okay, fellas, this is going to be more of a chatty video and for me to make sense and organize my thoughts, I have divided the video into three main parts. The first part is going to be remove the fear. How can you just do something in Power BI so that you don't have the fear of working with Power BI if there is any. Number two is going to be isolated learning phase, which is where we'll deep dive and learn the nitty gritties of Power BI. I'll talk about that in detail. And number three is the application of the learning phase. If you're an absolute newbie to Power BI, it wouldn't just hurt to spend two minutes to understand what exactly is Power BI. So Power BI is essentially made up of three, let's just say four main parts uh, that I'd like to constitute as a Power BI application. The first, the very first part of Power BI is something called as the ETL engine or the Extract Transform Load engine. Essentially, you would call this as data cleaning engine. Now, whenever you're trying to work on any business intelligence project or any data project, you would have to get the data and the data source most likely is not going to be a single source of data. You'd have maybe some data in SQL, some data in CSV files, some data in Excel format, some data even coming through unstructured sources like emails or PDFs. You would first have to connect to those sources most likely the data is not going to be clean, so we are not that lucky. So you'd have to clean that data up, make it a tabular format or whatever that might be, and structure that data. And once the data is cleansed, then you have done the first part of Power BI. And this entire first part of Power BI, which is connecting to the data and cleaning up of the data, happens in the first engine of Power BI, which we can also call it as the Power Query tool or the Power Query engine. Once you have cleaned the data, then the data moves to the second part of Power BI, which is the VertiPack engine, if you would like to call it as a technical term. But the second engine is more of a modeling and a calculation engine. This is where you connect multiple tables to one another. You build relationships, you write your formulas, you do your calculations and all of all of that. Once you have done the calculations on the cleansed data that you have, you finally take that calculations and models that you've built and build different visualizations out of it. What people generally see is the visualization layer. So if you maybe browse around for different Power BI projects, what you're going to see in images of Google or in ChatGPT is visualizations of Power BI, not really the architecture of how the ETL has been set up, how the model has been set up. So generally people think that Power BI is just a visualization tool. By the way, it is not just a visualization tool. Visualization happens to be one part of the three or four parts of Power BI. So once you have done the cleaning of the data, done the modeling of the data, written your calculations on top of that, you finally build some visualizations on top of that. And that is what you would call it as a finished work or a produced report. Now, there is also a fourth part to Power BI which is sharing your work with others. So let's just say that you build a report, an HR report, a sales report, a finance report, whatever that might be, and you have a bunch of visuals which are staring at you on your computer. How are you going to share that work with somebody? Now, in the historic age, the method of sharing was attaching files and then sending off to people. But now what you can do with Power BI is that you can upload your work on Power BI service, which is powerbi.com. And from there, you can give secure access to the people who are the stakeholders who would like to take a look at the report, which could be your colleague or your supervisors. So when it comes to Power BI, there are broadly four things that initially you can put your focus on uh, largely, which is your data cleaning, which is the first part, Power Query, that's what we call it. The second engine, which is the modeling and the calculation engine, which is where you will do all the modeling and DAX and things like that, like the formulas. And finally, the visualization layer, which is your, you know, beautification of presentation of reports and charts and graphs and things like that. And all of this work can then be pushed off to Power BI service. And from there, you can share uh, the work with other people. This is what largely makes the Power BI as a product. Now, once you've understood the three or four large moving parts of Power BI, the question is, how can you 
do something in Power BI which is quick and fast, removes the fear and gets you started and gets you going. The very first thing that I will recommend newbies to do in Power BI is to just get an experience of working on a single dashboard or a single report as fast as you can. We don't really worry about the complexity of the report. We don't really worry about the nuances. We just worry about can we just take a piece of data, push the data or connect the data through Power Query so that you at least take a look at what Power Query is. Once you take a look at that particular you know, Power Queries engine, you then push the data off to the DAX engine or the VertiPAC engine, do, do a bit of modeling, do a bit of calculations and then build some visuals out of that. This entire process of creating a quick and fast dashboard is going to give you experience of working with the three engine and how the data moves through these three you know, tools, which is Power Query, DAX and visualizations. This done over two dashboards is at least going to lift off the fear very, very quickly, but probably in a matter of a few days, and you will be able to understand that, okay, there are three parts in Power BI, and this is how Power BI works, and I am at least now confident about just working with Power BI in general. Now, here is the mistake that a lot of people make. Right after somebody has made their first or the most naive dashboard in Power BI, people start applying for the jobs and they think that this is all what Power BI is, build relationships, write a few DAX here and there, build some nice charts and you're done with Power BI. Power BI is way, way more deeper and complex than what it sounds like on the surface, but you can get started with Power BI very, very soon. I would recommend you to wait and build more skill, build more expertise before you start to applying for jobs, which is what I'm gonna discuss in the next few phases of the learning. One resource I will recommend to you is my Power BI Beginners course, and that is where I will take you through the basics of Power Query, basics of DAX, and basics of visualization, and you can learn that pretty fast. The link of the course is in the description of the video. Please don't hesitate to check that out if that helps you at all. Once you've taken a cursory glance of what Power BI is and probably you've built one or two reports, the next thing to learn in Power BI is that you level up your learning and you start doing isolated learning and you start focusing on individual parts of Power BI, which is Power Query obviously, and then we have DAX on the modeling engine and then we have visualization layer. We lay ourselves deep down into these three parts individually. Now, although the data is going to flow from Power Query, that Power Query connects the data, it cleanses the data, then it goes to the modeling engine where you do the modeling and calculation, and then it goes to the visualization layer. Although the data flows like this, but is this also the way that you should learn Power BI? In my opinion, the answer is no. What I would recommend is a very contrarian approach, which is where I would suggest people that you learn modeling first. Not even the DAX, not even Power Query, but modeling of the data first, because modeling happens to be, in my opinion, the most compromised area when people are building reports or dashboards. And this is what leads to mostly and largely wrong results of the calculation. So I would recommend people to start with the most important thing in Power BI because although Power BI seems like a visualization tool, but mostly it's a model building tool. And with that model, you can make as many reports as possible. So modeling comes first. Now, what is exactly modeling? Modeling is a way which is where you invite different data sets into Power BI. How do you connect the tables at the back? What kind of schema have you chosen? Is there a star schema, a one-to-many relationship, a many-to-many -many relationship, things like that? And that is what defines your model. In case you'd like to learn more about modeling, I would highly recommend a book by Sohail Bakshi. I think it's called Expert Data Modeling, and I'll highly recommend you to learn that book. The book starts right from scratch, talks about modeling approaches as to how do you learn modeling, what exactly is a star schema, why does Power BI need star schema in the first place, why is it so efficient and things like that, and discusses various approaches of building that star schema model. Now, once you have learned how to model the data well, what this is going to do is, this is going to give you an understanding that I want to be able to build a star schema, let's say for example, and my data set currently is not in the star schema format. So what is the data cleaning that I need to do? to be able to build that star schema. That understanding of what data cleaning needs to be done can then be learned in the Power Query part, which is where you'll clean up the data. And what is the calculation part that I can add to the data model, which is going to produce and support my calculation, is all of the DAX calculations part. So first thing, in my opinion, to learn is nothing more than data modeling. The second thing that I would want people to deep dive on is again, not visualizations, 
but data cleaning. I cannot tell you how important it is to structure or cleanse your data and not do it manually. A lot of times I have seen that people are working with these CSV files or Excel files and the data is not really cleansed well and the reports are broken. So they'll have to open up the Excel file every single time before they push it off to Power BI, clean the data manually and then push it off to Power BI. It is insane how much time people waste on not properly setting up the ETL or data cleaning process. So the second thing that I would want people to deep dive on is learning how to efficiently working with Power Query. And I've got a lot of videos that I have done. These are just experiences of my past problems that I faced while I was doing some consulting work. And some of them are simple, some of them are very, very tricky, but I have laid down a lot of videos on my YouTube channel. In case you wanna take a look at that, I will highly suggest that you please take a look at my Power Query playlist and start over there. In case you're interested to take a look at a couple of paid uh, you know, courses as well, I have absolutely amazing courses on Power Query, especially the M language. And if you don't mind, you can also join those courses. But, but Power Query comes second after you have learned the data modeling. And once you have understood that how do you model the data and how do you set up the data cleaning, which is the second part, then obviously the calculations are going to become easier. And that's where you can start to learn some DAX to be able to build calculations on top of Power BI. And that is what I recommend. Once you have learned this trio of modeling, shaping up your data through ETL and the DAX that is going to further enhance the quality and the depth of your calculations, now and only now we move to the final part, which is nothing but visualizations and making pretty reports and dashboards. When it comes to visualizations, I have generally seen people making the mistake of picking up visualizations first. When you pick up visualizations first as the foremost thing to learn in Power BI because it's attractive, it's catchy, it looks cool and things like that, you often are thinking about pretty shallow questions that you should be thinking about it probably towards the end only if you have time. Things like, should I add a shadow to my chart or not? Should I probably make my slicer blue or red? Should I probably enhance the color of this or should I maybe add a bookmark here or things like that. Now these are extremely shallow questions, especially when you're trying to build business critical reports. I believe that the accuracy and the timeliness of the report is far more important than the shadow or the color that you're trying to add. I saw this great post by a thought leader in the industry, uh, Owen Price on LinkedIn, and I'm gonna leave a link to that, or in fact, I'll have that shown on the screen right now. And he brilliantly summarized as to what exactly the CEO wants to see. The right way to approach visualizations is that you first of all, model the data, you build very interesting and correct calculations, accurate calculations. And then once you have built those calculations, visualizations is all about presenting those visuals in a way that it becomes understandable, lucid and clear for somebody to take a look at that number that you're trying to see and make decisions out of that really fast. And that's all about it. So even if your visuals are not stunning, are not glittering, they're clean, they're presentable, they're aligned well on the screen, your dashboard is going to far outshine anybody who has provided glittery things in their dashboard like shades or extra colors or some you know UI UX extra feature that they have built, your dashboards is still going to outshine that because your dashboards are modeled well, your dashboards have accurate information and your dashboards most importantly display some very interesting calculations rather than just decorating that card visual or adding a layer of shade into the, into the chart. Now, in terms of learning how to visualize the data well, I would strongly recommend to learn by example. So there are a ton of great people out there on LinkedIn. Gustav is one of them. I really admire the work that he does and a lot of sample dashboards that people have built on the community gallery. And I suggest that you do take a look at that as well. So take a look at examples where people have built it. Now, whenever you're taking a look at example, your eye should be taking a look at two different things. One, you should definitely take a look at the quality of the metrics that people have provided in the dashboard. Like 
how interesting is a number to take a look at from the managerial perspective or from the business perspective? Is the number very interesting to take a look at? That's the analytical eye that you would want to apply while you're reading somebody else's dashboard. That's one. And the second thing that you should take a look at in somebody's dashboard is obviously the design aspect, that how well the dashboard is constructed. How well is it aligned? What are the different features that somebody has used to make some information stand out and things like that? So that's the design aspect that you would want to take a look at. And our mind, in terms of visualizations, in my opinion, learns nothing better than taking somebody else's polished work. So if I ask you to imagine a good dashboard, probably you would not be able to do that. But if I ask you to take a look at somebody's dashboard, maybe a couple of them, and then take inspiration from that and produce your own unique work, there are very high chances that you will be able to come up with a great dashboard or a great report. Remember two things when you're learning visualizations. One is take a look at the quality of the metrics, like what interesting numbers are there. Second, how interesting is the design? But analysis or the metrics will always come before the design so that you don't get caught up in shallow questions. Once you've gone through this entire journey of removing off the fear, you understand Power BI and you've removed your fear, built a few dashboards, and you've also spent reasonable amount of time in isolated learning of modeling, Power Query, DAX, and visualizations. Now it's the time to start applying your learning. And what you can do now is that I would suggest you two ways of applying your learning. One is that I will highly, highly recommend that you become a member of the Power BI community and you start answering questions. Even if you're not able to answer questions, that is totally okay, but you are going to learn so much from the people who answer other people's questions by taking a look at their solution, contrasting their solutions as to why somebody has used a formula, a logic the way that they have and why other people haven't is going to help you learn so much about the way and the problem solving techniques that you're going to later need. That is part one. So you start obviously answering questions and you know being an active contributor in the community. That is one. The second thing, which is, I, in my opinion, even more helpful in building your journey with Power BI and getting a lot of confidence is to start doing projects. Maybe freelance projects, maybe paid projects, pro bono projects, I don't know, but you start doing projects. There is nothing better that teaches you Power BI than to solve a real life problem. I'm not talking about competitions although, because in competitions, the data is morphed. So you would get some data, which is nice and structured, nice and easy. They would give it out to you in Excel and you would put that into the ETL or write some DAGs on top of that and build some nice visuals. And the sole focus of that competition is just to win you know, the, the competition. But in real life, you're going to witness so many nuanced problems, which are just not the data problem, but also communication problems with the client that you're going to learn so much. Like, how do you even decide what metrics to calculate? Because a lot of times business leaders do not know what to take a look at in their data. And if you're learning Power BI from that angle, which is where companies are practically using your work to drive their businesses, you are going to learn at a different level altogether. So find projects, start doing real-time projects, start solving real-time problems because the problems that you face in real time are going to be far more difficult than the problems that you otherwise face. And once you have gone through this entire stage of removing the fear, uh, isolated learning, doing a couple of projects, maybe being a part of the community as well, is when you can truly say that you have gained some experience, relevant experience of working with Power BI and the confidence that you're going to show in the interview is going to be very, very different as opposed to just building one-off dashboards or participating in one-off competitions. All right, that's been it. Those were a few ideas in which I would suggest that you start your Power BI journey. This is what I would have done in case I were to learn Power BI once again, right from scratch. Please let me know in the comments where are you currently at in your Power BI journey and I'll be happy to take a look at your comments and reply. In case you'd like to start your journey with me on a structured learning path and you'd like to enroll into my courses, I have brilliant courses on DAX, Power Query, M, where I kind of talk about problem solving approaches as to how do you approach a problem, how do you think about a problem and then move yourself up to a level where you even start to solve problems of your own data. If you're interested, the link is in the description of the video and I'd be glad to see you in my courses. Well, thanks so much for watching this video and I'm going to catch you guys in the next one and wish you a very happy new year. Bye now.